Robert Bruno. And this is my steel house. I've been working on it for about 28 years and hopefully we'll be finished in about one more. Right now I use this as my shop for doing the woodwork, but it'd be the living room. All of the steel stays exposed pretty much the way you see it. So this is the finished interior. And there will be hardwood floors. Later there will be a library down in this area down here, which is actually down in the legs. This is a bedroom in here, and this staircase goes up to a bath for this room. This room could end up being a bedroom, but I haven't really decided what, it, what it's going to be. Um, later on, some of these surfaces will be white up in here, and the steel parts stay pretty much the way they are. That goes out to a terrace. In this build as you go, one of the things that happens also is that you find yourself coming back and cutting out something that you maybe did six, seven years before, and it looked right at the time, but in the context of something new that you're doing, a modification would look even better. So for instance, this room at one time had a column right here, and the outside roof out there came in to about here. So this, this is all changed. This is the main staircase from downstairs. I haven't completed all of the treads, but eventually there'll be wood like that all the way up. And all of the floors down there would be the same wood as the staircase, but it would be the lighter wood rather than the dark. Uh, one of the things that makes this a somewhat different uh, structure for most is that it doesn't have a, a skeleton with a skin draped over it. The skin is the structure. So the outside of this house is what holds it all up, and it's about 110 tons of steel. The motivation here is really to do something that has some aesthetic value. I'm not particularly concerned about having a house. I don't build this to own a home. I build it because I like doing sculpture. Steel is a material that's very attractive to me because it uh, it has characteristics that you don't find in anything else. It works well in compression, it works well in tension. Uh, pieces can be joined to where they become like one when you weld them. As far as the shapes, I'm interested in giving it a somewhat organic quality. I guess you could say somewhere between animal and machine. Uh, I think the ways in which steel is normally used are valid, but they're just one small way in which steel uh, works. Um, the evolution of this house is that I'd, I'd actually been working on other sculptures prior to this, and one which was quite large, was large enough to stand under, and it seemed like a, a pleasant environment. And if I could capture that same feel at a little bit larger scale, uh, I could live in it. And so that was really the beginning of the idea for this house. There, there isn't a lot of equipment involved in, in building this house. Uh, I have a welder and a uh, cutting torch and a few hand tools, and that's about all it really takes. In the beginning, I did have a crane, uh, which was hydraulic, and I could move it around, and uh, I could actually suspend a little chair from it and sit in that and ride around the perimeter and do the welding and operate it with little remote switches. Mm -hmm. But in general, it, it doesn't take a lot to, other than just a lot of work. Uh, it's mostly quarter inch steel plate, which I buy scrap, and so it's not expensive. Every piece is cut and fitted uh, on site, and all of the shaping of the materials is done on site also. I use a cable come along and uh, I can basically hook onto both ends of the piece of steel and crank on it and uh, flex it and then you start tacking it to whatever it's adjacent to and then crank it some more and then tack it some more. And 
producing you have it all.